Good morning and welcome. We gathered here today to celebrate the life of Joanne Samples. And as we gather here in this place, and as we gather in our faith, and remember and honor Joanne's faith, we recall these words and truths. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. And rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. And as in baptism, Joanne samples put on Christ. So in Christ, may she be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ Himself is pure. We are reminded by the story of Jesus traveling to Bethany upon the death of Lazarus. As Jesus was entering into the neighborhood, Mary and Martha both approached Jesus and asked them if they believed that He was indeed the Son of God, the resurrection and life. And we are reminded that we gather in honor and celebration of that resurrection to life. And we are reminded of these words that Jesus said. I am the resurrection. I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we gather here in this place several months following the death of Joanne. A private graveside was held in her memory and honor. And we've gathered here to bring closure to our lives and to celebrate once again her life. We've gathered here to praise God. We've gathered as friends and family to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Joanne Samples. Still today, we come in our grief, acknowledging our human loss, and we pray that God may grant us grace, that in pain we may find comfort in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. I invite you to pray with me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we praise You for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise You for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before You. Especially we praise You for Joanne Samples, whom You have graciously received into Your presence. To her, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon her and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Over the course of the last several months, we, in our own grief, have sought comfort. Comfort from others. And we have offered comfort to others. Cards, hugs, tears shed. All of those things help us mourn together the loss of someone dear and loved. There's no greater place that we might find comfort than in Scripture. As Eve was sharing with me this morning, one of the last visits that she had by video with her mother, she shared the 23rd Psalm. 
we hear it again this morning to remind us of God's provision, the peace that we can find, and the comfort in knowing that God is for us. God is with us. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod, Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from Psalm 121, I chose this passage because Joanne knew well the hills of West Virginia growing up and living her life in the Salem area. And so I'm sure this passage was familiar with her or to her. And it reminds us once again that God is our help in our time of need. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And from Romans 8, hear these words reminding us of God's love. If God is for us, who then is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, God forbid it. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I invite you as you remain seated to sing with me two verses of In the Garden.
hear now from the word written by John. We have the Gospel of John, a story about Mary traveling to the tomb on the first day of the week in search of Jesus. I share this story because the tomb, as uh, some scholars believe and as John writes here, was placed in a garden. A garden. Something that Joanne loved to do and to create. And so I share these words with you. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying. One at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to his disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Will you pray with me? Oh God, in these moments, speak to our hearts. Surround us with your loving arms and bring us comfort. May we find peace only in you and in the hope of resurrection. And we celebrate that gift and that promise and the reward that Joanne now experiences. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. One of the things that I do know about Joanne, although I've only learned about Joanne, unfortunately, is that she loved to garden. She loved to garden. And any good gardener knows the seasons of gardening. And I think it's appropriate that um, we be reminded of the seasons of life. The seasons of life. The writer of Ecclesiastes says, There is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to loose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything suitable in its time. 
I think about Joanne and the seasons of her life. Oh, I'm sure she could name times and places if she were here today and if she had not struggled with Alzheimer's. Times when she had experienced all of those seasons that the writer of Ecclesiastes has offered us this day. But as I've come to know Joanne through you and, and through stories and uh, through conversation, I'd like to point out several seasons of her life. Hmm. This season of her life with regard to gardening, something that she did all her life, as, as most of you know that. And I wonder, as a child, if perhaps growing up during the, as a young child in the World War II time and, and the, the creation of Victory Gardens, if that might have been the moment that she fell in love with the idea of gardening. Hmm. There was that season in her life growing up during difficult times of war, turmoil. And not just in the world, but, but even in the midst of our lives, we, we find ourselves in turmoil from time to time. And I would venture to say that her struggle with Alzheimer's and not being able to remember was one of those turmoils, something that she struggled with. Oh, there was the season of life where she was a wife and a mother. Hmm. Bobby and Eve. She was dedicated to you, Eve. In fact, I, I, I learned just recently that uh, she was so dedicated to you that, that she even traveled with you and moved temporarily to Marshall when you were finishing school. Yeah. The love of a mother. There's nothing like the love of a mother. Hmm. And then in September of 1991, she became a widow when Robert passed. Your father, Eve. What a difficult season in life. But in the midst of that season, she held fast to her faith. Maybe it, she struggled a time or two, but it was a solid faith where she knew the Lord as her shepherd. The Lord that would walk with her through, walk with her through the valley of the shadow of death. A place where she need not fear. And beside the still waters where she... in turn would find peace. Hmm. And there was that season of her life when she engaged in serving others through Delta Kappa Gamma and the Eastern Star as she lived out her call to offer help and service to people. Well, you can't forget the season of her life as a teacher, one of which uh, she embraced for some 36 years. In fact, I, I know of a, a couple of people that are in this building that uh, were students of hers during those times at Van Horn Elementary, whether it be first or third grade or, or another grade. She was respected she was an individual who loved to teach. The children thought she was nice. She was nice, but stern, strict at the same time. A lot of respect for her as a teacher. And for 36 years, that speaks volumes. And then there are those seasons of life that, uh, or those characteristics of who Joanne was that span all seasons of life. She was sweet and kind, very dedicated 
as a parent, as a teacher, as a member of, of uh, the church in Salem, as a, even a member here at First Church. Oh, There were those little idiosyncrasies, those little things that, that Joanne loved about life, um, like cookie cutters. Cookie cutters. Collecting cookie cutters. Planting flowers. Raising a garden. Hmm. Even sheep and cattle as well. Joanne had a sense of humor. A sense of humor. She was funny. And she was always willing to help. Always willing to help. But I would be remiss if I didn't share with you the reason we're gathered here. The season of Joanne's life that gives us reason to be here in this sanctuary celebrating the hope of resurrection and eternal life. The season I call the child of God. She was indeed a child of God. And she grew up in Salem at the Methodist church there in Salem. And she was a faithful member there until the church closed. And it was there that she learned those, those songs, I'm sure. Jesus loves me. It was there that she learned not just about Jesus' love for her, but how that love is manifest in the people that gather that make up a part of that community of faith. She was nurtured in God's love by those members and in turn nurtured others in God's love as she shared her faith in her own unique way. Her love for God in her own way and manner. Hmm. It wasn't until 2009 that she became a part of the life of this church. So it mattered not whether she was in Salem or in Clarksburg. She still remained a child of God. And as a child of God, she was a joint heir with Christ. And for that reason, we celebrate the gift of love that God had for her and the gift of love that she offered you. This gift that gives us hope, that gives us strength in this time of need. In this time when we seek peace and comfort from one another. Romans says, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing in life, nothing in death, nothing beyond, even beyond our control can separate us from that love. And we celebrate it this day. And oh, I envision maybe, maybe uh, Joanne, as she entered into the gates of heaven, walking through the garden, looking for her Lord, and my friends in that love, that carried her to that garden in the love that carries us through this time, we can surely say with Joanne, I have seen the Lord. Amen and amen. At this time, Eve would like to come and, and share a word with you, some of her reflections.
Joanne was born at 6 a.m. on October 1, 1935, the daughter of Helen Ice Moochenhouse and James Moochenhouse. And Joanne graduated from Salem College, now Salem University, in 1958. And she met Robert Lee Samples at Salem College. She married him in 1959. Joanne was a teacher for 36 years and taught for most of them at Van Horn Elementary. She was a stern teacher, yet kind and loving. She always made her students feel loved at Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Valentine's Day and Easter, she baked and decorated sugar cookies for her class. A favorite memory I have of her happened when I was just three years old. A West Virginia author had come to school and mom had stayed after school and bought a book from her and had the author sign it. Then walked to Grandma Helen's. Grandma Helen was my babysitter. Grandma Helen was her mother and presented it to me. She said, Eve, this is a West Virginia author. You can be a West Virginia author someday too. Mom was a terrific cook who made every holiday special. She made bunnies out of canned pears at Easter, two kinds of stuffing at Thanksgiving, and jello salad at Christmas. I have continued the tradition of the jello salad and I've made it for, for my college level nutrition classes as part of the party at the end of the term. Mother grew a garden for many years. She raised cattle, sheep, chickens, and we, we had the chickens for eggs. One year she took her third grade class on a field trip to our home, which was also a working farm. Mother served as a good example of kindness and generosity. For years, Mom and I stuffed Salvation Army stockings to give to children at Christmas. Mother was a lifelong Methodist. In 2008, Salem United Methodist Church closed, and we moved to First Church, where Mother's aunt and my great-aunt, Elta Ice, had been a deaconess. Prior to that, we had bounced around between a few different churches for about a year, and we felt like church refugees, but First Church welcomed us with open arms. Teachers never know how many lives they touch. Mom touched many lives through her life and teaching career. Because I vow to carry on her traditions of loving kindness, care, generosity, and service to others, through me, she can touch untold more. Godspeed, Mom. Thank you. There's a hole in my heart that only mom filled and nothing else ever will. No, nothing else ever will. When I was only three, mom said, Eve, you can an author be, but a book from an author of W.B. And had his sign just for me. Gardens, beach trips, and a zoo of pets. All our holidays were the best. Black waterfalls I'll never forget. 
From that crib I have my favorite plush pet. There's a hole in my heart that only mom filled and nothing else ever will. No, nothing else ever will. Go to First Church in 2009 when the Salem Church closed. We got left behind, but First Church welcomed us with open arms and mother is with saints and in the stars there's a hole in my heart that only mom filled and nothing else ever will no nothing else I invite you to pray with me. Oh Lord, we give you thanks for Joanne's life, for the testimony of that life, her faithfulness to you, her faithfulness to us, for your love for her, which was steadfast, unswerving, that gave her courage and life to face all the seasons that she encountered. We pray, O oh God, that we might find ourselves with the same courage, the same strength, the same willingness to persevere. We give You thanks, O oh God, for Joanne. Her life, her love, her faith. And we give You all the glory, O oh God, for the gift of life that You have given her and You give to us in our faith. We thank You, O oh God, again, for the gift of this time when we can remember and celebrate, honor a life well lived. And we pray, O oh God, that we may hear the words that Joanne heard as she entered into your presence. Well done, good and faithful servant. For we pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray as we pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is let there be peace on earth. I pray that we might model that peace in our lives. I invite you to stand as you are able. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God our Creator, children all are we. Let us with each other in perfect harmony.
And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always and forever. Amen. Amen.